the EU keeps doing is uh, delivering what's called in bargaining uh, last, best, and final, and which means that this is the be is not going to get better than this. this is the best that we can offer. But then the EU indicates that maybe they can wiggle. So problem is that when you repeatedly like more than say two or three times, I like give a last, best, and final, and but then it's clear that it's not your last or your best or your final, right? So the EU doesn't have a lot of credibility right now. For that helps the Greek government maintain some credibility because EU has less credibility than Cyprus. Cyprus's biggest threats right now are if he fails to make things happen with the Russians, but they um, agreed to the Turkish stream. That's good. That, yeah. So I actually wrote about this way back when the election happened, and I, and, um, I actually like explained the whole story, like how it would happen. Uh, can, you, can you give us a link to your article? Yes. I, I'll put yes. it in the description You'll see it box. Down here. Yeah, yeah, in the description box. Or I'll make an annotation. Yes, great. Yeah, you guys will see. I wrote this uh, months and months, I don't know, six months ago or something, whatever. Uh, whenever, when was the election in Greece? Um, I wrote it when I wrote it basically I on remember. election day. <laughs> and I explained how the whole thing was going to unfold. Um, and then, um, I mean, uh, you know, readers will decide for themselves if the things that I include reflect the reality today. I think that, I think that it does. In fact, I mentioned both of the thing, both of the the two main factors that are happening right now are the things exactly that I said. I said that Greece will not exit the euro, but that it will not, um, but that it will to survive. It will do two things. It will be it will join this South Stream Turkish Stream project. And number two, there's a small thing that they included that people didn't pay attention to in their platform for the, for talking about Syriza, which was to create a new development bank as a fund in Greece. This is a parallel institution which as a fund does not violate the laws and bylaws of the ECB. Greece does not have its own central bank. It's controlled by the ECB, which yes. is part of the Troika, and so and their interest rates and so forth are dictated by foreign powers in uh, governing in Brussels, City of London, and Wall Street. So the main problem, besides the sovereignty issue, is that they actually are not allowed to have their own bank. So how do you do that? Well, they basically are going to do it anyway. They're going to call it something else. Then they'll let the lawyers fight it out. It's called a fund. But as we know, the BRICS bank is also called the New Development Bank. So it was basically a signal they were sending loud and clear to the world, to anyone who like cared to just dig four paragraphs into their program, uh, that they were uh, intending to create a parallel institution that has the same name as the Bank of BRICS. Now we hear that uh, Greece wants to join has received the official invitation to join BRICS. So I wrote about this way back then when it happened, and, and I mean, I'm not like uh, trying to like stroke my own whatever, pat myself on the whatever, but I definitely forecasted all of this because that's what I do. So yeah, check out the article um, in the link below, and you'll see it, you'll see the date, and you'll see it was actually published on a uh, number of major sites people get, um, you know, reliable uh, alternative news from. So yeah. I think it was, it was published on New Eastern Outlook, Oriental Review, and uh, Global Research, uh, Fort Roos, and on my own site too, so yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I read this article and uh, I think other people should read it. Yeah, it, uh, basically, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of cool to read something now in June that was written back when the election happened and kind of yeah. see, you know, what things happen and it's all panned out. I mean, it's all... It's all panned out. Um, because, I mean, and so I've been wrong about things before, but this time I had, you know, I had my fingers on the pulse. So, um, so I'm, I'm in a good position now to like forecast what's happening in the future, and it requires kind of having a good sense of what how the Russians view things. Uh, yeah. I'll say this: the Russians are not against uh, EU, and they want they want no, their course we they we like their not. countries that they like to be part of the EU. But it's going to be a different EU. They of want course, a e different. Yeah, right, right. So it's that's going to be the Eurasian. E exactly. Right. The e EU. Yeah. Yeah. E EU. Not the current EU. Not the not this yeah. bankster dominated. Not this sodomy. Not this sodomy <laughs> faggotry. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. It's the EU. You. L U.
But yeah, so I think that's our 15 minutes for this segment. I don't know. Okay, so I th we think we should stop right now, yeah? Yeah. You can like edit the last yeah, okay, yeah. minutes out because you might be like four minutes over. Okay. Okay, Joaquin. Bye. It, it's, bye. It was, it's good to have you here. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. I was glad to do it. We'll see you soon. Bye. See you soon.